So I'm going to do. Thank you all for joining us today. I'm really excited to have Danielle Tabor. She recently just got her new, I always stutter with this one. I'm just going to call it an NLP and you can tell them what that means, but she just got this new certification and she was a contributing author and in intention. She's an international bestselling author. And she's also account manager at Woodard Restoration Cleaning Services as well. So I'm excited to have you as our presenter today. So I'm going to go ahead and kick it off to you. All right. Well, I am super excited to be here as well. First time I've ever done this before. So thank you everyone for joining. I'm very excited to share some of this stuff with you that I'm super passionate about. So I'm going to get the presentation up here because I just figured out how to do that. So we are going to share tab entire. I want that and then the window and then share. Beautiful. So let me know when you can see the full screen. It's good? Well, looks great. All right. Um, so today we're going to talk about awakening your superhero mindset. And we are going to start with, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and why, um, one, why I call it awakening your superhero mindset and kind of why I'm talking about these things. And then we're going to deep dive into what we'll get to know as our three trusty and loyal sidekicks, intention, mindfulness, and gratitude, and how that all relates to awakening your superhero mindset. So a little bit about me. Um, so I am Danielle Tabers. I am an account executive with Woodard Cleaning and Restoration. I am also a wife and a mother of five children, three human, two fur babies. I, um, like Jennifer said, I did become a published author this year um, through Jennifer and her amazing grit community and her grit series and anthology series. I was able to write a chapter and become a published author in intention, which is very exciting. And I wrote my chapter. Um, it's called my superhero mindset. So a little bit of my background um, is my journey in life um, was not so easy at first. I, it began with a childhood kind of overshadowed by domestic violence and marked by constant change. We moved a lot. I switched schools 14 times between the ages of five and 13. Being a new kid, um, I was bullied a lot. And that constant, the trauma from Witnessing the domestic violence, the trauma from the bullying, um, from never being able to put down roots and always feeling like I was battling to find my place in this world really gave me a negative self-perception and a negative perception of what life was like in general. So as a teenager, I started hanging with the wrong crowd, got into drugs and alcohol, um, headed down a dangerous path, dropped out of high school, found myself pregnant at 19, and I just had these deep rooted belief systems that life was just supposed to be nothing but struggle, chaos, and hardships, because that's all I knew. Well, fast forward, one year my mother gave me for Christmas um, a book called The Secret by Rhonda Byrne, and it really changed my life. It changed my outlook on life. It changed my victim mentality into more of one that I was solely responsible for creating the life that I wanted to live, and I could do that through the law of attraction, positive thinking, and what I found um, with intention, mindfulness, and gratitude. And it showed me that I didn't have to be the victim, that really the biggest and scariest obstacle I had to overcome was myself and the thoughts that I had, the belief systems that were deep-rooted, and that I could change those things for the better. So that's why I named my chapter My Superhero Mindset, and I talk about my three trusty sidekicks, intention, mindfulness, and gratitude, and that those three things have truly changed my life. So there they are our loyal and trusty sidekicks. And again, these are not things, these are not things that I've created, right? I did not make these up. I have just found a way to use them and love to talk about them because they're very powerful tools. So intentions are just clear and purposeful commitments to understanding and nurturing one's inner self and well-being. It is setting a focused and heartfelt goal to explore, learn, and grow in ways that align with your authentic self promoting personal growth, self-awareness, and mental and emotional well-being. Mindfulness is just the practice of cultivating a non-judgmental awareness of your thoughts, emotions, and experiences 
in the present moment and paying deliberate attention to your internal world, observing your thoughts and feelings without criticism or attachment, but just becoming aware of those thoughts and those emotions that you have instead of just living on autopilot, which most of us do. <laughs> and then gratitude. This is probably my favorite and I think most impactful and powerful tools, one of um, impactful, most powerful sidekicks that we can have in our lives. Gratitude is amazing. Um, when we practice gratitude, we practice focusing on our strengths, our achievements, the love and support we receive from ourselves and from others. We recognize and appreciate our own unique qualities and the positive impact that they have on our lives and the lives of those around you. Every day there is something we can find to be grateful for. I was just at um, a talk seminar at our church that we go to on Sunday, and the talk was the power of gratitude. And the woman that spoke speaks, um, she teaches classes on how to cultivate gratitude because it's so powerful to changing your life. And she said she tells her students to say something that they're grateful for, think about something that they're grateful for 200 times a day. That is some powerful stuff. And it sounds like a really crazy amount of times to think of something to be grateful for, but we have about 70 to 80,000 thoughts a day on average that we're not even aware of. So changing those uh, to 200 positive grateful thoughts, probably not so bad in the grand scheme of things when we look at it that way. <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit about beliefs before we dive into our intention, mindfulness, and gratitude. So beliefs are ideas that we hold true without certainty or evidence. Some of these beliefs, and a lot of them, can be limiting beliefs, and they're not even based in any kind of truth. They're just what we have come to expect because that's what we've been shown or that's what we've learned throughout our lives. Beliefs are formed in two ways, through experiences or inferences or deductions of these experiences, or by just accepting what others tell us to be true. They can be influenced by socialization, trust, geography, and emotion. So beliefs, there's usually emotions attached to beliefs, and beliefs are emotionally motivating. So when we get into the practice of mindfulness and gratitude and really focusing on some of these emotions and thoughts, we're going to start retraining our brains attached by emotion. So the more positive the emotion, the better the belief system will be ingrained and we can reprogram those old belief systems. They are reinforced by our repeated actions. So being intentional in our thoughts, words, and actions is very important when we're trying to reprogram limiting beliefs. They do have an evolutionary purpose. They are um, used in calculations we make about future events based on our past experiences, but that doesn't always mean that it's helpful to us. So we just need to be aware of what those are so we can use them to the best of our abilities to create the life that we are deserving of and that we want to live. So when it comes to beliefs and belief systems, the good news is, um, is that there is neuroplasticity. Is anyone aware of this term or heard it or know what it is? Yes, I've heard of it. Okay. Sorry. I can't see anyone. <laughs> That's right. I raised my hand. I remember saying that. So yes, I have, I have seen of this, especially when I was studying, um, neuropsychology in my undergraduate. Yes. So it's fascinating, right? So we used to think that our brains stopped developing pretty much in childhood and that once you, you know, had gotten to a certain age, that's it. You couldn't really change, right? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. And so it's really not that way. So neuroplasticity is the brain's capacity to continue growing and evolving in response to life experiences. So plasticity is just the capacity to be shaped, molded, or altered. So neuroplasticity, plasticity then, is the ability for the brain to adapt to change, um, to adapt or change over time by creating new neurons and building new networks. So there's a saying that neurons that fire together wire together. So we have the ability to change our belief systems, recreate new programs in our mind, and actually build new neural networks in our brain. And it just takes... Um, 
tools like intention, gratitude, and mindfulness to really make this happen. So we don't have to rely on these old self-limiting belief systems that keep us stuck. We can change that. And that's pretty fascinating. So now let's talk a little bit about intention. Intention setting. Do any of you do this? Do any of you have intentions that you do um, throughout the day, affirmations, anything anybody wants to share about intentions? I do, but I don't know if anybody else is going to jump in. I'm very intentional about how I spend my time each day for the bigger goal. But um, so I usually set one annual goal and then I have my like five-year goal of how I'm going to build to that vision. But I'm very intentional about how I like plan every minute of every day. <laughs> <laughs> that's good though. That's powerful stuff, right? Awesome. I don't mind jumping in. Yeah. I just learned. I mean, not that I haven't been doing it before, but I like the way this is described as a thir three, two, one journal. And again, I have five children. So three, two, one was the way I used to help them redirect their energy. <laughs> so I, I now redirect my energy with three things I'm grateful for, two things of affirmations and one win, usually from the day before. I love that. <laughs> I'm, I'm writing that down. I like that three, two, one. Um, I have this intention. So again, I, when it comes to deep rooted belief systems, right, I have a very negative relationship with money because most of my time growing up, we always struggled, right? We were, sometimes we were in between homes. Sometimes we didn't have money for food or electricity. And it was just this constant scarcity mindset that there was never enough money. So I am working really hard to rebuild my relationship with money. So one of the things I have on my phone is a screensaver um, that I look at every day and repeat is that I attract money, opportunities, and abundance into my life every single day. And I read it every day and I get that belief behind it, right? That gratitude, that thankfulness, that happy, positive feeling. And I do this every day. I've only been doing it for a couple of days now, right? I just started. <laughs> and so I was at the gas station yesterday getting my coffee and speaking with Lori and Kate at the gas station because, you know, we go there every day. And this man walks up to me and he says, ma'am, I think you dropped this. And he walks away. I didn't even really see him. And he, it was what looked to be cash next to me. And I'm like, one, that's weird. I don't carry cash ever. And then I look at it and I'm like, that's a $2 bill. And so this man gave me a $2 bill. So I asked Lori and Kate, I said, is this a real $2 bill? Like, I'm so just shocked at what happened. I didn't even see the man's face. And they said, yes, he as a child, his mother told him to always hand out $2 bills to people to spread, to build his luck and to spread luck. It would create luck for him in his life. Well, he's now, I believe, a car salesman. And anytime he sells a car, he comes into the gas station and he gets these $2 bills and he hands them out to anyone that is there. So of course I was like, that's because I have my intention set that I attract money into my life every single day. And I was very grateful to this man, right, for doing that and how thoughtful and what a great way to build his own um, circle of receiving and giving by giving out these $2 bills and believing that it brings him luck, right? So it was just a very interesting thing. And something as simple as $2 just totally made my day. But I put it in my intention that I attract money every day and I attracted two. <laughs> so the, what is nice about that is sometimes we have to recognize the small things when we're setting intentions and we're being grateful and building a practice of mindfulness. Sometimes we have to start small and acknowledge the little things like that that align with what the intentions are we are setting and our values and our gratitude and show appreciation for them because it helps build our trust muscle and the fact that we really can create and change our lives. And so sometimes those small things build up to the bigger things. So when it comes to setting intentions, you want to reflect on your desires. So this has been very interesting for me in a journey that we all go through is I didn't know who I was. I was always just trying to fit in. I was always trying to be what I thought other people wanted me to be. So I had to learn to really deep dive and figure out who in the hell am I because I did not know. So becoming aware of who you are, what you desire is an important part of being able to then 
set intentions for what you want your life to be, not what others may think that you should do or what you think you should do based on what others think is the right path, right? Another important tool to intention setting is to be specific. So the example I like to give with this is if I were to send you a text message and I just sent you all of the letters of the alphabet and expected you to decipher my message, you probably wouldn't know what I was thinking. So when we're setting intentions, it can be very similar to SMART goals, right? You want to be specific in what your intentions are. Um, so like Jen said, she sets intention for throughout her whole day. So that's very specific. She knows exactly where she wants to go and the actions she takes to get there based upon her desires and her values, right? So being very specific. Um, if we just say something like, I have an intention that I want to live a good life. Well, what does that really mean to us? So we need to deep dive and be a little more specific. A good life to me means that I set an intention to do more volunteering for this organization that I like because that brings me joy. And for me, service is a good life. So just be specific when you are creating your intentions. Using positive language. So very, very, very important to be very intentional about not only the thoughts that we have, but the words that we speak and the words that we are bringing into our awareness. So using positive language, we wanna remove terms like can't, impossible. We don't want to set intentions on things we don't want. We want to set intentions on things we do want. So getting out of that scarcity, scarcity lack mentality, competitive comparison, we wanna let go of all of that negative language and we want to use positive language when we're setting our intentions. Make sure intentions, intentions align with your values. So again, that's getting to know yourself. What do you value in life? Um, are, is family a huge priority value to you? Is career, is being in service of others, is being famous, whatever it is, right? Do you wanna be a singer or rock star? What are your values in life? And when we create intentions, we wanna make sure they align with our values and not someone else's. A really powerful tool when we're creating intentions is to not only think them and speak them, but to write them down. So I um, love to write things down because it helps in my crazy head to kind of set those things that I want to remember into my brain better if I write them down. So I take a lot of scribbly notes. Um, when I study, that's how I do it. I would read and then I would write and then that just helps it sink into our brain. So when we are creating intentions, you also want to write them out. And create a ritual. So do you do your intentions um, every morning? Set your intentions for the day. Do you do them on Sundays for the week? Do you pick um, January 1st to set intentions for the year and then check back in in six months? Create a ritual around it because, again, intention setting all of these things, intention, mindfulness, gratitude practices, they're all practices. And we, when we create a ritual around it, and we start doing it consistently, it becomes easier and easier and something that we'll just do kind of automatically without having to force ourselves to do it. And then visualize success with the intentions that you're setting. So visualization is a super powerful tool. Does anybody create like vision boards or when they have like a meeting, they kind of visualize the outcome? Does anybody practice visualization? Yes. Yes. I do too. Yes, it's powerful stuff. It really is amazing. Um, so I was listening to some podcast or I don't know if it was a podcast or TikTok. I can't remember exactly, but they were talking about the power of visualization. And they did this study with some sports teams and they broke them up into three groups. They had a group that had to go in and practice in person every day for two weeks. Then they had a group that they were to practice only in their minds every day at home. They didn't actually physically do anything. They just visualized the practice every day at home. Then they had a third group, I think, that didn't do anything. So they bring them all back in after a couple weeks. And guess who showed the most improvement? It was the group that was at home visualizing the practice. So visualization is is phenomenal and it's super powerful. So I love, love, love vision boards. Um, I love sitting with and visualizing the outcome of something like this. Like, okay, this is gonna go really well and I'm just gonna visualize myself not stumbling all over my words or 
saying um a lot, which will probably happen, or not talking so fast because I do struggle with that. So visualizing the outcome and the success of what our intentions are is a super powerful tool that can become part of your ritual when you're setting these intentions. And when we visualize, we also want to make sure we're kind of creating the emotions we would have around what that success would look like, what that outcome feels like, because the emotional part is so deeply attached to rewiring the brain and recreating and building new belief systems. So we want to visualize the outcome and we want to really feel those feelings that would happen um, when we reach that outcome successfully. Again, stay committed. It's a practice like anything else. When we want to create a new life, when we want to build and reprogram our brains, when we want to be happy, when we want to be successful, we really need to stay, stay committed to the practice because maybe I don't know about you know everyone, but for myself, I was in a negative headspace for a long time. I was very angry, resentful. I was always in a scarcity mindset. I would compare myself to others. I was never good enough. All these negative icky things, right? I lived like that for a long time. So I tried to stay committed to just immersing myself in these things and practicing these tools and exercises all the time. Does that mean I'm perfect? Absolutely not. I still fall off the wagon all the time and we're human and that is okay. It is a practice. It's not about perfection. Um, I don't like to get caught up too when it comes to like the positive language, positive thinking. So positive thinking doesn't mean that you are just happy with a smile on your face all the time. All of the emotions we experience are good that is part of the human experience and those are okay and it's okay to mess up and it's okay to forget to do it or not feel like doing it. So we really need to practice self-compassion and allow ourselves to not be perfect all the time. And we don't want to be thinking positive, happy, cotton candy, rainbow thoughts all the time, right? It's okay. We need to experience those other emo emotions um, because then we wouldn't appreciate the more positive emotions, right? We can't have joy without sadness. We can't have, you know, happiness without pain or light without dark. We need those. And that's just all part of the journey in the human experience. So practicing self-compassion when we maybe are doing our daily gratitude, it's okay. Give yourself a hug, like pick it back up tomorrow. <laughs> now mindfulness. So mindfulness, um, is just, again, just kind of being aware of what's going on with yourself. And a lot of times, um, like I mentioned earlier, we have about 70 to 80,000 thoughts a day. Now, I don't know about you, but I could not tell you, like when I heard that number, it was shocking because I do have a lot of thoughts that go on up here, but none of them which seem coherent <laughs> or make any sense. It's mostly to-do lists and song lyrics. Um, but that's a lot of thoughts that we're just kind of cruising around on autopilot, not even being aware of. Or sometimes, you know, I, I would snap at my kids or my husband and I wouldn't really understand why, right? I just, just feel anxious and snippy and I wouldn't know why. So practicing mindfulness just allows you to kind of be aware of those thoughts that are happening, those emotions you're having without any kind of judgment, just allow them to be because the more aware we are of those things, the more in control we can become. So we don't want to let our thoughts and emotions control us. We want to learn to flip that around and be in control of our emotions and our thoughts so that we can become the best versions of ourselves and really create that superhero mindset. So some tips to mindfulness is again, daily mindfulness routine. So this does not have to be hours of meditation. I do not do well with sitting for a long time and meditating. These can be simple things like a one minute body scan. So you just sit for a minute, set a timer on your phone. If you have one of the little sand timers from a game, that's just a gentler way to awake from that. Um, but just do a body scan. Start at the top of your head, get a little comfortable, take a deep breath in. And then just scan how you're feeling. Kind of notice the top of your head. Notice your shoulders, you know, go down. How does it feel sitting right now? Do I have tightness? Is this cold? Is this hot? And work your way all the way down to your feet. And as thoughts come, just let them come. 
let them come, let them go by kind of like a little train, train cars going by and be aware of them, but let them go. Don't get hyper-focused and it takes practice, but that's just a 60 second kind of bringing you to the present, bringing you to be aware of your body and how it's feeling and the thoughts that you are having. Mindfulness, again, self-compassion. So I thought I had to meditate for a long time when I first started down this journey and I would get mad at myself. I'm like, you can't even sit still for five seconds and you can't, you're just like losing your train of thought. You're not focused, but that's not what it's about. It's a journey and it's a practice in becoming aware of yourself and it takes time. So again, we'll come back to self-compassion. We are human. We are not perfect and we are not meant to be. So practicing self-love and self-compassion is very important um, just in general. And then accepting our emotions, also very important. Again, like we talked about a few minutes ago, um, it is not bad to be sad. It is not bad to feel angry. We, um, I think with this positivity mindset and this positivity culture, we can it can kind of be toxic sometimes that we beat ourselves up if we're not happy. But we can't really experience that happiness without dealing with those other emotions. And those other emotions are very important in how we grow and how we experience life here. So just accept all emotions. Doesn't mean we have to dwell in them, but becoming mindful that I feel angry right now and that's okay. Let's kind of explore that a little bit. Why am I feeling angry? What's going on in my world right now? What kind of thoughts am I having? And like, okay, you know what? Give yourself a hug. It's okay to be angry and that's all right. But what are we going to do now to change that emotion? Mindfulness can help us be non-reactive. So I lived for a long time as a very reactive person. So I would just freak out at the smallest little things. Um, maybe like I tripped on a, one of the kids' shoes coming in the house and I would lose my mind. Like I couldn't handle that one little thing. And it's really because I wasn't dealing with what was triggering those emotions in the first place. And I really wasn't aware. It was just this ball of anxious, angry, fear-based um, mindset. And so it took a while of me being aware. And now I'm not as reactive as I used to be. I don't fly off the handle like I used to do because I know now I can realize those feelings. I know what that feels like when it starts bubbling up it, in my chest. I can feel it right there and then it goes up through my throat and I get really tense and I just want to explode. Um, but I can recognize that now where before I couldn't. And it doesn't mean I don't have those feelings. It just means that now I'm aware when I start feeling that to take a deep breath and stop for a second, figure out where it's coming from and give myself pause and a moment to kind of work through that before I lose my mind. <laughs> um, deep breathing, super helpful in bringing yourself to the present moment. Super helpful if you're feeling anxious if you're feeling angry, just taking a moment to take deep breaths in through the nose, hold for a few seconds out through the mouth, can lowers your heart rate, kind of gets your oxygen to where it needs to be and gives yourself a second to kind of adjust to what's going on. So deep breathing can be a very powerful, quick and easy tool in bringing yourself to the present moment and being mindful. And that body scan, like we talked about, is a, is a really helpful exercise in mindfulness. Self-love meditation. Okay. So YouTube, Headspace, there's so many apps out there um, that give you guided meditations. I like those the most. And I think self-love meditation, when it comes to kind of creating your superhero mindset, recreating your life, we have to learn to love ourselves, to truly be able to love life, to truly be able to be open to possibilities and opportunities and love, we have to love ourselves. So making that as part of your practice is super important. And I'm going to give you a really silly, I don't know if anyone's tried this and if you have, let me know, but a really sounds silly and ridiculous exercise that can help improve your self-love is to look yourself in the eye in the mirror and say, I love you. So super weird. And the first time I did it, I, I was laughing, right? Because I'm like, this is so ridiculous. If somebody saw me doing this, they'd think I was like the craziest person ever. But the laughing actually helped boost my mood for the day. And now I try to do that. And I try to look at myself where before I was very hard on how I looked, right? Mother of three kids, you know, ex getting older, right? So I would beat myself up when I look in the mirror. And now I try very hard to show myself love and 
acceptance for who I am. Does anybody else do anything like that or tried anything like that before? I've heard something similar of giving yourself a high five in the mirror every time you leave the bathroom. <laughs> yes. I'm going to try that one next. My husband's going to be like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> But it really is helpful and it sounds so silly, but even if it just makes you laugh a little bit, it's still boosting those good endorphins, right? The happy chemicals in your body. So it seems silly, but it really is helpful because we, um, I think especially as women, and I'm not saying men don't do this too, but I think we struggle with the self-love. We're so worried about everyone else and all of our things that we don't take time to one, care for ourselves, which is a version of self-love, we're just so worried about others. So I think it's very important to practice self-love and know that, you know, we're pretty awesome and amazing beings and that we should love ourselves just as much as we love others. Mindful journaling. Um, so journaling is a very good tool. I'm sure we all have heard about journaling and um, I and back and forth with this, just because I'm a very scattered person. So I have 50 million journals all around. And so I like, if you were ever to collect them all, there would be like a couple days worth of journaling in this one and some over here and some over there. But I do think it's a very powerful tool, especially when we're trying to cultivate mindfulness. So when we're journaling, you can do just a stream of consciousness journaling. I like that a lot where you just don't hesitate, just write everything that pops into your head. And then when you reflect on it, you can kind of start to see the patterns of thoughts that you have. So it's letting go, not stopping to be like, oh, I shouldn't write this or how should I say this? It is just writing or typing out just the word vomiting on the page and then kind of revisiting it to try to see what it is that we're thinking about. Mindful eating. So this is just, um, this isn't about healthy eating or diets or exercise. This is just about, again, bringing ourselves to the present moment. So while we're eating, so I don't know about you, but I'm like Russian, 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 and I just throw stuff in my mouth and I'm, you know, usually doing something while I'm eating. So I'm not really paying attention. So mindful eating just means taking a minute to kind of, okay, take a bite. What does that taste like? What's the texture like? Um, what's the smell like? How does this feel in my mouth, right? And taking the time to chew. Again, it's just a practice in bringing ourselves to more awareness of self and being present in the moment. I really, really, really like walking meditations. Um, so again, I struggle to sit still for long periods of time. And what I have found is there is all types of forms of meditation. So you can meditate while doing the dishes. You can take a walking meditation. Um, people who like to crochet or garden or create art, draw, paint, right? There's so many different forms of meditation that bring you to the present moment, allow you to express yourself and kind of, it doesn't have to just be the seated cross-legged traditional form of meditation. There's all different ways you can connect with yourself and your thoughts and that moment. I do really like emotional check-ins. I am trying to do this more and more with myself. Um, and that is just taking time throughout today to check in with myself. How are we feeling? What's going on? You know, and if I feel a little off, I'm just kind of trying to deep dive into that. So what's going on throughout the day? What just happened? What are you thinking about? And just kind of checking in with myself and see how I'm doing and what I'm thinking about to try to, um, again, just be aware of what's going on. So we spend so much of our time just subconsciously on autopilot going, just trying to survive and get through our day that we don't take time to check in on ourselves and really know what's going on. So we don't have to go through all of these. Uh, quiet contemplation, I do like though. So quiet contemplation, um, sometimes I do this in my car because a lot of times I like to listen to music or podcasts or be on the phone when I'm in my car and then I get home and it's time to try to do dinner and talk to the kids and my husband and pay attention to the dogs and maybe wrap up some work. And so I don't get a lot of quiet time. So sometimes I will just turn the music off, turn the radio off in the car and just drive with no sound other than my own thoughts. And that sometimes lets me kind of see what's going on in there. Sometimes I come up with crazy ideas. Sometimes I am like, oh, I totally forgot to do this because I am taking a minute to be quiet and those, my to-do list pops in and I can remember stuff that I forgot. It's just nice to be quiet sometimes in the shower. That is a great time to meditate. Um, I like sometimes to watch like Netflix 
and listen to music while I'm in the shower, but important to have that quiet time. So anywhere you can find it to just have quiet around you because we are so bombarded with noise and interruptions and distractions that finding any way to just have some time to be quiet helps you get to know yourself a little bit better. Now, this is my favorite of the three tools, gratitude. I think it is one of the most powerful. I think it is one of the easier of the three to practice, um, especially once you start doing it more and more. And so, so powerful in how it can change your life, right? Because it can change your perceptions. It can change your emotions that you're having. So gratitude is awesome. Um, and it's important because it shifts our focus. So I can't remember the term and I meant to write it down, but I didn't. But you cannot have two different emotions going on at the same time, right? It just can't do that. So you cannot be angry and show gratitude at the same time. So when we decide to purposely and intentionally focus on gratitude, then we're shifting our emotional state, our energy, our vibration into something completely different. So it can shift our focus from something, say, negative to something more positive. It helps foster a positive mindset. When we live in a moment of gratitude, when we live our life in gratitude, it helps us cultivate this mindset, this superhero positive mindset that says, no matter what life throws at me, I'm going to find something to be grateful for in that moment, some lesson learned, um, some something from that challenging, horrible thing, and know that I will get through it stronger and survive it because of that mindset. So that's what a positive mindset is. It doesn't mean that I'm happy and positive all the time. It just means that I've become resilient, right? So gratitude, positive mindset helps build resiliency because we understand that no matter what we go through in life, we will come out okay on the other side and we will find the lesson learned in that moment so that we can grow. So I really struggled with this again, my childhood, right? Like I was very much um, angry about that. I played that victim. I just let it build up this resentment inside of me towards my parents, towards life. But when I started using that and shifting my mindset and shifting my focus from the anger, the resentment, the hurt, the fear, I instead started saying that I was grateful for those experiences I went through. Though they were horrific and though they were horrible, they created who I am today. They taught me empathy. Uh, they taught me how to be adaptable to change. They taught me how to um, know, be strong, right? That So I fostered that attitude and shifted my mindset that those obstacles were terrible and I could live and dwell in the victim despair mindset, or I could shift that, be grateful for it, find the value and the lessons in it and the growth in it, and then know that you know what? Yeah. No matter what I go through, I will focus on that. And it just makes you so much stronger and resilient. Practicing gratitude enhances self-acceptance because when we are grateful, we want to be grateful for not only everything around us and all the blessings we have every day, but we want to be grateful for ourselves. So when we look in the mirror and we give ourselves a high five, or we look in the mirror, we say, I love you. I want you to say, I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for you. Um, and just whatever that is, I am grateful that you are able to have three wonderful children. I am grateful that you are able to get up out of this bed today. I am grateful that you um, just want to connect and serve others. Whatever it looks like, show gratitude for yourself and it helps enhance self-acceptance and it deepens self-understanding. So when we can learn to be grateful for others, even in all their faults, even through all of our struggles, when we can learn to find the gratitude, we can start to find the gratitude for ourselves. We can start to understand ourselves better. We can start to understand what it is that we value in life, what it is that we want in life, um, who we want to be in this world. 
So tips for practicing gratitude. So I really like all of these. So daily gratitude journal is awesome. Um, I personally do this thing that's called, you'll see it on the right over here under exercises at the bottom, but I like to do what I call wake up and smell the gratitude. So I will send messages to family, friends, my kids, or say something to them. My husband, wake up and smell the gratitude. Today is going to be a good day. I am grateful for you because, and so those are really, I love doing that. It makes me feel good. It makes them feel good. And that's one of my favorite practices. Writing it down, a daily gratitude journal. I really, really um, like doing my gratitude practices in the morning because it kind of sets the tone for the day, but do it all throughout the day. You can do it anytime you want. You can never be too grateful. You can never practice it too much. Like I said, that woman I listened to on Sunday, I went and saw, she was like, I tell people 200 times a day. 200 times a day, say something that you're grateful for. You're sitting in traffic, you're in your car. I am so grateful for this car. I am so grateful it's not raining. I am so grateful for the way the breeze feels. You know, I'm so grateful for this time that I get to think, you know, sitting in traffic that I get to think through um, my plan for this project I'm working on. I'm so grateful they play in all my favorite songs, whatever it is. Um, all throughout the day, try to find ways to practice gratitude. Expressing gratitude to others and telling them how grateful you are from them can change people's lives. Um, I don't think we do this often enough um, as a, you know, as a society in whole, I think that it's very nice when someone tells you that they're grateful for you um, and that they're thankful for you. And that means a lot when somebody says that to us. And so I think paying it forward and spreading that love and gratitude can only not help the people around us, but it comes back to us too. It's just a never ending cycle of giving and receiving. Gratitude um, tips, mindful reflection. So this can kind of tie into the mindfulness aspect, right? So if we kind of review our day, right? Go back over what happened yesterday or at the end of the day and find those moments to be grateful for. It kind of lets us explore ourselves a little bit more, be reflective, be kind of present in the moment when we're like, even though we're thinking about past events, we can still be in the moment to show gratitude for what happened. Shift our perspective. Everything, our whole reality is created around our perceptions. So we have the ability to control that. And gratitude can really help shift our perspective when we choose intentionally to focus on what is good in our lives. Rituals, right? Rituals, I think, are important when we're doing any anything that we want to make a, a common practice and something that becomes second nature. Rituals can just help us feed into our minds and make it something that gets easier and easier and stay committed to when we build a ritual around it. So I know that every morning when before my eyes are all the way open, I go through a list of three to five things that I am grateful for before I let any other thoughts enter my head. And I have to catch them sometimes because it'll instantly start with to-do lists and you forgot to do this and who needs that? And I stop for a second, take a deep breath, and I do my gratitude first so that I can go into the rest of my day in that positive, high up energy. So you can do gratitude meditations, write gratitude letters. So they can just be letters to whoever you want them to be that you keep for yourself or you send to others. That mirror work, telling yourself how much you love yourself and how grateful you are for you. Gratitude jars. So I really like these too. So you can do these however you want, but um, we give these as gifts sometimes in our family that we will write down so many things in a jar that we are grateful for, for someone and give that to them as a gift. And then you can, I just got my gratitude jar out today that the, my family had given me, you know, kids made for me for Christmas um, a year or two ago and was reading through them just the other day for that little boost. You can, um, forward do. So maybe January 1st, you do 365 days, little pieces of paper of stuff you might be grateful for from the year before or that what you think you'll be grateful for. And then you just pick through it as a reminder, gratitude walks. So very similar to doing like a meditation walk. You can just take a walk outside and just be grateful for what's around you. You know, how does the wind feel on your skin? Is it sunny? Is it cool? Do you like that? Do you think about how beautiful the scenery is around you, maybe animals that you see, but just taking that time to be in that moment, to be grateful and appreciate what's around you while also being kind of in touch with nature, being outside and taking a walk. You can do this around your house. 
Um, and then wake up and smell the gratitude we already talked about. So does anybody want to share any practices they do around gratitude or any tips for anyone else that they find helpful? Every night before dinner, when we're having dinner with the boys, I always say, okay, what are we grateful for? What's something we learned and who's someone new that you've met? So we always kind of flip the script where it's more of that positive mindset and reflecting in that moment. And it seems to help set the stage, but sometimes it's high and low, right? But we always bring in that gratitude pace to talk about it. Hope oh, looks like Linda has something to say. No, I wasn't meaning to cut you off, just to <laughs> raise my hand, but um, I have kept a gratitude journal for years. And sometimes I fall off the wagon and I go months without doing it. And then I start the practice back up again, but it's also good. I have kept the books and it's also good to go back and look through them um, at various times, what I've been gra grateful for. I love that. And it is fun. Like, even though I have 50 million different journals, it is fun to go back and see because it's kind of a reminder. Um, I don't know. It's just fun to go back and see what you were grateful for in that moment. And just a reminder that there's always something to be grateful for. I do like going back and reflecting on past entries. <laughs> yeah, it's a great reminder. Mm hmm. <clears throat> I was going to share, um, Daniel, I need to get you one of these, the super mom for your superhero mindset. <laughs> what is this? Hold on. I'm going to escape. It's just a journal. Yeah. I don't even know where I got it, but anyway, if I find one of these, I'm going to get one for you, but it's super mom. And it's my, um, grateful, like what I write that I'm grateful about in here. Or if I have like ideas that I want to push forward, I put sticky notes in here of that idea. Cause I can't keep track of everything I do. <laughs> the sticky notes. Vision board. I yeah. It's like in my own little closed vision board. Otherwise the house would be plastered with this. Um, but as we get into Thanksgiving, I wanted to share, we've done this for years. I, I host Thanksgiving for our family, but we do a gratitude tree and I have leaves and so everyone writes on the leaf what they're grateful for on Thanksgiving. So it's like the whole family. Um, mm -hmm. And then I bring it out every year and keep the leaves and then kind of say, well, everyone was grateful for these things last year. And then we add to the tree. So with Thanksgiving coming, that might be something fun. Um, mm -hmm. I just grab some branches from the backyard basically and put them in a vase. So it's not expensive, wow. you know, and then you can um, think, I think, you know, probably Michael's or Amazon, you can just order some regular leaves that mm -hmm. they actually, I think there are actually trees you can purchase now and do this. I think that's somebody took my great idea. <laughs> Got to capitalize on those things anyway. Um, but yeah, so thanks. All this stuff has been wonderful. So thank you. Yes. Thank you. I love that um, Thanksgiving one. <laughs> I'm gonna, the tree, well, that is coming. So if you have a thing you want to do. <laughs> yes. Love that. Love it. I, I just purchased those leaves at, oh heck, what's that called? Not Michael's, but the other one. Ooh, like Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby. Yes. Sorry. Totally skipped oh, my mind. Okay, good. Yes. Ooh. Just yeah. in case that is an easy place to go get them. And they were paper. They're really thin paper um, leaves. Yeah. I need to get some more. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. That'd be, yeah. And there's a Hobby Lobby. I can walk to Hobby Lobby from where we live. <laughs> Oh, that'd be bad for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I could do my little mindfulness gratitude walk to Hobby Lobby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so uh, love that. Thank you guys so much for sharing those things. Um, those are wonderful tips and tricks and just different ways to cultivate and bring that gratitude into our lives every day and share it with others, which is so important. Um, so just a little recap, we talked about awakening our superhero mindsets with intention, mindfulness, and gratitude. So we want to set a clear purpose and direction for creating our best lives. We want to cultivate our self-awareness in a non-judgmental, observational, and conscious way. And we want to acknowledge all the positive in our lives and cultivate that positive mindset, knowing that we are strong badass people that can get through anything and we can create the life that we deserve and that we want. 
So I'm going to just leave this little quote with you um, from Joe Dispenza, who I love. Um, you have to feel empowered for your success to show up. You have to feel abundant for your wealth to find you. And you have to feel gratitude to create the life that you want. So I'm going to escape. I'm going to escape out of this, maybe. Thank you so much, here. Danielle. I'm going to open it up and see if anybody has any questions for you. Stop sharing. There we go. <laughs> hey, you all. So, Danielle, that was wonderful. And I so appreciate people's perspectives and information and the way that you processed it and then delivered it. So you know, I have a team of a lot of people and um, this is also to Jennifer. So um, is the avail, is it, and I'm, forgive me if this is, a, you can just say, we'll talk about that later if this is not a question to ask right now, but is her recording available to someone like a business owner to share with my employees? Absolutely, I'll put it on our Grit YouTube station. So you can share that link with all of your staff members or however you want to share. And then I'm going to give Danielle a copy as well. So she can oh share. Oh my goodness. But Danielle, that's okay with you and everybody's happy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just, again, I think it, these aren't concepts like I created, but I do think that it's helped the more people that talk about this stuff and give their own. That's why I wanted everybody's input too, right? Like, what do you do? Because everybody does it different. And even if it helps like one person like to hear it a different way, like that's amazing. <laughs> Okay. Exciting. All yes. right. Thank you. It was valuable. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. And she's actually going to be facilitating a workshop too, which is going to be a bit more of an intensive on this topic. So if you want information on that, um, I can send you an email on that as well. Yes. I have some really, really fun things for the workshop. Um, and you'll get little how like superhero mindset kits that I'm super excited about. <laughs> Does anybody have any? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Danielle, I just want to say you did an awesome job. Yay. So, and, and you live what you preach, which is great to see because, you know, most of the time you're running around and um, promoting cheer and positiveness. And I, I just think all of us need to do more of that. So thank you for this session today. I think it was amazing. Thank you for joining. And uh, really quick, is that your wallpaper that I'm seeing in the background? Yes. That is beautiful. You can Thank see you. it in person because we're going to be down in her office the end of this month at Spark. <laughs> so okay. for yeah. the good luncheon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. Cool. All right. Well, if you guys need more wellness, we're going to do a mini wellness workshop actually tomorrow at Woodard where Danielle's office is. Um, we have a lady coming in from out of town. She's like taking a four hour car ride to give us a mini wellness retreat to help with our mindset, our chakra, teaching us healthy ways to have snacks and just to get in tuned and take time for tranquility since we're all top performers running at incredible speeds. So um, there are a few more spots available if you're interested, but yeah, cool. Well, thank you all for joining. I will send this email out to you too, so you can watch it a later date and share it however you'd like. But Danielle, amazing job. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm excited for the workshop. Yes. Great about job, the Danielle. Job. Good job. Thank you, thank you Danielle. Okay. It was excellent. Thank you. Hi, guys. Hey, have a beautiful week. day. Thank <laughs> you. Bye. Bye. Bye.